Will everyone please bow your heads and join me in a moment of silence in honor of all the fallen members who've made the supreme sacrifice in the armed forces, law enforcement, fire and EMS service. To date, the FDNY has lost 100, over 180 members to illness, illnesses directly related to the rescue recovery effort at the World Trade Center. Please keep many of the members who continue to battle their illnesses that are directly related to the rescue recovery in your thoughts and prayers. At this time, I'd like the Chief Warrant Officer and the Chief of Department to please lay a wreath in honor of the fallen 343. May they never be forgotten. Good afternoon. My name is Lieutenant Joel LaPointe from the FDNY Ceremony Unit. I'd like to welcome everyone to Engine 10, Ladder 10. This is ground zero for the FDNY. Members of 10 House were the first members of the FDNY to respond, respond to the September 11 attacks of the World Trade Center. Today we remember the bravery of the 343 members of the FDNY who made the supreme sacrifice 17 years ago today. On September 11, 2001, this department lost simply not 343 members, but lost one member 343 times. Today, we come to remember each of these members as individuals. The following members who made the supreme sacrifice from the tent house that day, were Lieutenant Greg Atlas, Firefighter Paul Pansini, Lieutenant Steve Varell, Firefighter Sean Talent, Firefighter Jeffrey Olson, and retired Captain James Corrigan. We also have the son and brother of two of our special guests, Firefighter Jonathan Yalpi, Squad 288, and Firefighter John Chapora, Engine 219. And today we are honored to have some special guests. The 2nd Marine Aircraft Wing Band under the direction of Chief Warrant Officer Stephen Howe, FDNY's Chief of Department James Lennon. We also have Captain Gerard Chapora from Engine 164, whose brother John is one of the 343 members who made this perish that day, and firefighter Lee Ielpi from Rescue 2, who is a 25-year veteran of the FDNY, also a Vietnam veteran with the U.S. Army. His son, John Jonathan, also perished, was one of the 343 that day. We are especially honored to welcome the family members and the officers and members of Engine 10, Ladder 10, to attend today's very special ceremony. It's my honor to introduce our first speaker, Chief Department, James Lennon. Good morning to all assembled here today. Uh, we stand here proud. We stand here to, to remember, and just to make that solemn pl promise never to ever forget. As we stand here with the Marine Corps band from, from North Carolina, we know that a hurricane is about to hit and they will be departing. Step on the way we also know that the, the FDNY alone, the United States Marine Corps, has a long storied history of protecting this country. And we stand here in solidarity with them. And I would be remiss not to mention and remember also, too, the 7,000 members of the United States military that have given their lives in the global war on ter terrorism since that first day of battle, which happened across the street in this sacred place called Ground Zero. We, the, uh, the FDNY, the NYPD, the Port Authority Police, took arms and, and rescued so many people and defended this country. And then we passed it on to an organization like the Marine Corps with our military. 
So today we stand proud that our members, to our family members who know what the sacrifice is, they did not die in vain. We get knocked down, we've been knocked down many times, but we stand up. And that symbol across the street of the Freedom Tower is our symbol of how we overcome the, the bad and evil in this world. We have won. We are a better nation because of the firefighters, the police officers who stand before us. For these Marines, these proud Marines that stand before us. I would also, too, Gerard Trapora's brother, John. Not only did he survive the Marine Corps bombing in Beirut in 1982, he, un he gave his life in defense of this, con this country and this department on 9-11. Lee Ielpi, as he stands here right now, one of the most highly decorated firefighters in the history of the FDNY, a true American of, in an agency that's filled with heroes and heroic. You have Lee Ielpi, and he stands here, a combat veteran of Vietnam, gave his, his son's life, who sacrificed the greater good to make us better on the attack on 9-11. So we stand here proud. We stand here as the FDNY. We remember what the loss of those heroes that stood before us, those heroes that served our country, our city, that fulfilled, fulfilled their oath that we all take to protect life and property in this city, this state, and this country. And it's up to us to make sure that we never forget their loss. We always honor their presence at all times. And we make sure that we honor our U.S. military tonight. So stand proud. Stand tall. For our families, your, fa your loved ones live in every single firefighter you see standing here. We are them, and they are us. And we will never, ever forget them. God bless the FDNY. God bless the United States Marine Corps, and God bless this great country. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Next, we will hear from Captain Gerard Chapur. Thank you to the Marine Corps Band for being here today. What a wonderful and powerful music that you give to us. Thank you for your service to our great country. May God's be home before the storm. Again, I am honored to, hear, honored to be here speaking to you today. A day that brings a variety of emotions to all of us. For me, it's a roller coaster of emotions. From deep sadness because my only brother is not here to enjoy a life that he had planned for. To high honor because I am able to stand in the honor guard where the names of our fallen are read. And this year, my daughter Elizabeth and her uncle's name. My brother, Tom Shapiro. As you heard before, he was one of our three 43 firefighters lost on September 11th. When I think about 9 11, I try to keep my spirits up. When I think about service, commitment, and dedication, those are the four values that my brother had and what he stood for. Those exact values. What you remember the United States Marine Corps from this point every year, every single day. John spent his life in service, starting out from Boy Scout in his hometown of Tonto, and then the United States Marines surviving the Marine Corps barracks bombing in Beirut, Lebanon, 1983, where 241 sailors and Marines died, sacrificing their life to the first, at the first terrorist attack, affecting America. But his service did not end with John. But his service was not the end for John. It was part of who he was. He was also a dedicated family member and a friend to all that he met. He was committed to changing people's lives one person at a time. Committed to help in any way he could, even at the cost of his own life, which it did. Those values he held dear were not lost when John died. It only took me a short time to realize that to honor him, I would continue in his footsteps the best I could with dedication, commitment, and service to help other people. That brought me to the ceremony unit, where I could be as dedicated and committed to helping other people as he was. So many people helped me and my family in our darkest hours after 9-11. Now I, 
and be able to help our own FDNY family in their darkest hours. I feel that if I'm able to relieve their pain and their grief in some small way, then I have succeeded. And the FDNY ceremony unit has succeeded as well. The ceremony, the ceremony unit's dedication and commitment to service and serving our families with pride and honor makes me a proud member. And my brother's life of service and commitment to helping others lives on in me. I encourage all of you to look upon 9-11 as a reason to help other people. See the good in people and help those who may be struggling in their lives. Let us all use today as a day of remembrance, but also as a day committed to changing the lives of people in the future. Always remember the past. We cannot change it. We cannot go back. But we can look to the future and how you can make a difference in the lives of others. Thank you all. God bless you. Thank you, Chair. Next, we will hear from Leah Elby. Going on now, today, 17 years later, we can talk. 